Welcome back to another exciting chemistry video. In this video, we are going to learn about SI prefixes. We learned that different prefixes represent different values. More importantly, if we look at this right here, for example, the prefix mega represents 10 to the 6 or 1 million. Well, in this case, on the other end where we have the prefix pico represent 10 to the negative 12 and that is a very very small number now we also see some very common prefixes like milli that is 10 to the negative third or the thousandth okay or something like kilo we know that very well that represent 1000 the question is why do we have all those prefixes when they all use to measure the same properties. For example, kilometer, picometer, nanometer, they all use to measure length. Why do we have prefixes? Now, think about this. When we are writing a number or when we record down our observation in terms of quantitative data, we write down number, unit, and substance, right? Imagine like this, when we measure something like in terms of mass, we have kilograms and then we have 1000 grams which one is easy for us to keep track now that's a little bit easy right imagine we have mega joules and we have joule now we have a bunch of digit that we have to worry about right where we know that we want one mega joule that's very straightforward now what about nanotechnology working with nanotechnology that's 10 to the negative 9th if you write this in terms of meter, that would take forever and the chance of making mistakes is very lightly. Well, if we just write one nanometer, super easy, isn't it? So, by having prefixes at different values, we can now change that unit into another unit that used to measure the same properties of matter. But making our data look a lot more organized and a lot more simplified so that we can communicate our finding to other scientists a lot easier. And we can replicate the experiment a lot easier with, with fewer mistakes in terms of the number. Now let's look at a common example by looking at this picture right here. Here we have a very descriptive picture starting with a human being we measure in meter, right? And then going down, we have, what, the eggs of a chicken. But that is something that we see, of course, we're going to use millimeter. But what happens when we get to something very small, like cells? We can't see our cells with our naked eye. It's the same thing with bacteria, it's virus. So to say this measure in millimeter is, is a lot too small. So we have to use something like nanometer, okay, or micrometer. And that's, again, that's the reason why we have different prefixes of different values. Now, what are you going to do in terms of this table right here? In order to apply the prefixes, the first thing you have to do is you have to memorize the prefix name. So this is the name. And then we have the abbreviation, which we will commonly use. Instead of writing kilograms, we're going to write kg. A lot faster, isn't it? And then, of course, here's the most important thing and the most challenging aspect is that you have to remember that each prefix represents a value and the exponential number is what you need to remember. Mega is 10 to the 6, okay? Now let's go over all of them. Kilo, K, 10 to the 3rd. Hectos, H, 10 to the 2nd. Deca, DA, 10 to the 1st. And here we have the base, more exactly, is the base unit in terms of base as we use this. This is not the same thing as the base unit that we have for SI. This is the base in terms of wording, okay? For example, like this, we have kilograms. See how kilo is the prefix? This is the base word. And we already know that out of the seven, SI base unit, except for kilograms, is the only one with the prefixes. The rest of them is actually the base word itself. So keep that in mind, okay? And for base, of course, it starts with zero. And anything to the zero power is equal to one, okay? And then deci, 
D, 10 to negative 1, centi, C, 10 to negative 2, milli, 10, M, 10 to the negative 3. Micro, we have this symbol for micro, it looked like the letter U, but it's 10 to the negative 6, nano, N, 10 to the negative 9, pico, P, 10 to the negative 12. So those are the prefixes that you will see in your science class. Now let's do some practice problem. How can we interpret those prefixes? to understand in terms of the base word. For example, right here, right? Another common notation that you're gonna see is E on your calculator is actually equal to time 10 to the power of something. So instead of typing time 10 to the power of negative three, you can just write capital E negative three. Again, our goal is to simplify our data so that we can communicate with other people about our finding. Here we have 13.9 kilo or kilometer what is kilo is going to be? And we're going to interpret without the prefixes, okay? So of course we know this is going to be meter. So what's K? K is what? K is right here, 10 to the third power. So instead of writing time 10 to the third power, what we can do is 13.9 e to the what? 3. Now of course, this is equal to 13.9 times 10 to the third power, okay? What about 13.9 CS? What C stand for? C is centi. So that is centi second. Okay, that's used to measure time. So what's centi? 10 to the negative 2. So we have 13.9 E times 10 to the negative 2. So we write E right there, right? So what's the unit without the prefix second? Okay, that's the fundamental unit for time or the base unit for time. Here we have 13.9 ml. What's this little m stand for? That's not the same thing as mega. That is for milli. So in this case, we have 13.9. What's milli? 10 to the negative 3. So e negative 3 m. Now over here, we have 13.9 m second. That's the same thing, milli. So we have 13.9 e to negative 3 and second. Now let's go to streamliner.com to do some practice problem that provides instant feedback so we can self-reflect on our understanding. So in this case, we have the problem done for us already. Now just plug in the answer. So again, we have 13.9 km. So we type in our answer, 13.9, okay? And instead of typing time 10 to the power of 30, we are going to type E and 3. And this M is meter, okay? How about 13.9 CS? Again, C is for what? 10 to the negative 2. So we have 13.9 E to the negative 2 and then S. Now let's check our answer. And there you go. We got it right. Let's move on to the next problem. Here we have this question. We did it already. Now let's type in our answer. 13.9 E to the negative 3. Where do we get an e to negative 3 from? That's from milli, okay? So now, meter. Right now we have 13.9 ms. Again, milli, 10 to the negative 3. So we have 13.9 e to the negative 3. And then we have second. And check for our answer. Now, would you like to do another problem? We're gonna do one more problem together. Of course, you can always do more problem, and we have a lot of problem for you to practice, okay? So in this case, look at this one. Mega, look at this one. Mega is 10 to the negative six. So we have 13.9. And notice how we keep have 13.9. That's because when we wrote this problem, we just used 13.9. But this number could be any number, okay? It depends on the teacher. So in this case, mega is 10 to the six. So G is for grams. And D, D is for what? D is for deci. Deci is 10 to the negative 1. So we have 13.9 E to the negative 1. And that is liter right there. So we check our answer. And there you go. So go ahead and continue to do some more practice problems until you actually memorize all the prefixes and knowing how to apply those prefixes to, in order to understand that each prefix represents a particular value that used to measure the same property of matter at different sizes. And that's it for SI Prefixes, and we will see you next time on another exciting chemistry video.